What's a good word, y'all? It's your boy DKB here. So Rex Ryan and Bill Belichick finally agree on something when it comes to the New York Jets. You have Rex Ryan praising us and mentioning that we're going to go to the Super Bowl. And you have Bill Belichick kind of going back into his bag as the head coach of the Patriots and throwing around a ton of praise to the New York Jets, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. Now, one of the things to note would be <laughs> there's a vast difference, obviously, on Sundays before he was doing it almost as a, a backhanded compliment and to not give bulletin board material to our team. Uh, that definitely fed off a lot of emotions. And you can argue that pretty much any of our wins during the Bill Belichick tenure uh, were due to heavy emotional bouts, right, uh, where we did just enough to eke out a victory uh, in Rex Ryan's perspective of things uh this is just more of the same with him we know he's always been bullish on the jets he never really wanted to leave um regardless of him becoming head coach of the bills for that short stint it always feels like he still bleeds green and white so it is interesting to see that they're on both sides of the same coin this go around right and, and that's what, the fact that they're bullish on the New York Jets so specifically Bill Belichick highlighted two players for the Jets and it shouldn't really be a surprise whatsoever Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson he mentioned for Brees the Jets are one of the hardest teams to prepare for from a skill standpoint because of Brees Hall he's an outstanding running back who can take the ball the distance he is very good in the passing game defensively you want to do everything you can to take the ball out of his hands and load the box he also goes on to mention the the you know dynamic that causes for defensive coordinators when it comes to leaving Garrett Wilson one on one, and he says problem is if you load the box, you're singled out there on Garrett Wilson, and there's a tall order right there to deal with him in one on one coverage. His run after the catch is exceptional. One of the key stats that I've seen thrown out there, and I can't remember which analyst essentially dropped this. It might have been Nick Feria, but. If you keep in mind what the West Coast offense is designed to be, it's a short passing timing attack offense that really relies on getting the ball out of the hands quickly and letting the weapons go out there and do what they need to do. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that you know the majority of the offensive yardage that we see really should be run after the catch, yards after the catch type situations for the Jets and not necessarily just you know 60 yard bombs that we've thrown downfield although with Aaron Rodgers we also get to add that into our repertoire uh, but that would be the biggest thing to key in on here right we want to see if the Jets can consistently put themselves in positions where they're finding the spacing the timing and they can really go out there and turn what's a five you know air yard catch um, you know football in the air to hands uh, into 20 to 30 plus yard plays uh, I've seen a different stat, and if I can find it, I'll make sure they're obviously up here on the screen for you guys. But um, there was some kind of correlation in between. If you can find at least one explosive play per drive, you're more likely to hit the end zone than not. Um, and I think the number jumps from like 4.8% if you don't get that explosive play all the way up to like, it might have been 28 uh, percent, but I feel like the number I saw was like in the low 40s, like 44 uh, percent. So that's a pretty drastic difference for sure. Uh, but I think the Jets of training camp and what we've seen over the course of preseason uh, indicates that could be a, a huge part of this New York Jets offense. I know there's still question marks around Nathaniel Hackett uh, and his ability to call the proper plays, but I think one of the things you also rely on is the fact that Aaron Rodgers understands the mentality of what Nathaniel Hackett is trying to accomplish, and if the play isn't necessarily the right one to, to get that job done, Aaron Rodgers can check into a different one uh, or just ulterior uh, method of trying to attack and get into that specific front of mind so I'm not all that worried we'll kind of see what happens and you know of course the 49ers is a great litmus test here uh, but some things to keep in mind that kind of coincide uh, with the thought process here in a moment uh, is you know Rex Ryan mentioned you know obviously he thinks this is the year for the Jets um, he did even take into account the fact that you know he says specifically you got Aaron Rodgers albeit at 100 years old but I mean that team is loaded uh they're effing loaded and that's the truth you know uh, again I think it goes down to the simple statement that the Jets are highly talented 
the question marks are a matter of health, not ability out there on the field. So unless a couple people fall off a cliff in terms of uh, how they performed against recent years uh, or the injury bug strikes, the Jets should absolutely be in everything. And I'd argue even if that happens, they should be highly competitive in every game based on what we've seen them do with Zach Wilson and Mike White and, and you know all these other guys at the helm. But some interesting uh, you know betting perspectives around this as well. Aaron Rodgers currently leads comeback player of the year honors. He's seventh in MVP. Um, Robert Sala is actually ninth in coach of the year honors, which I think is a little higher than I would have expected. I probably would imagine he'd be in like the, the high 20s, maybe at best. Uh, but it seems like there's definitely some love for him to get the Jets uh, to the playoffs and, and probably get that accomplished. And then Brees Hall is sixth in offensive player of the year. Garrett Wilson is 13th for the same offensive player of the year honors. So we're not necessarily being slept on. You can, you know, the, I think at large, the NFL world uh, recognizes the talents. They're not ready to say that they're, you know, superstars of the league just yet. And that'll really be what this season is about accomplishing for a lot of these guys, at least on the offensive side of the ball. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, I mean, honestly, here, I want to take everything with a grain of salt. But, you know, the expectations for me haven't changed. Playoffs 100% and it definitely has to at least uh, if it's going to end early end in an AFC championship bout in my opinion um, and, and I'm definitely expecting us to you know if we're middle ranked somewhere it, it would be in uh, a category that you know maybe isn't the strongest indicator of having a highly effective offense or defense something like that but i'm expecting top 15 finishes on both sides of the ball to be honest and with the ability to brand boyer shown and how quickly he can acclimate hopefully to the new special teams rules um i would imagine him to have a top 10 finish once again as well so let me know what you guys think, though. Bill Belichick praising the Jets. Rex Ryan, obviously, uh, giving us his uh, pretty consistent sign-off, I would say. Although, for the record, it was only maybe two seasons ago where he was saying that, you know, don't compare me to Robert Sala. We're nothing alike. Uh, and, you know, we've seen him turn tail. And, and uh, obviously, he's in the, the clubhouse now. But let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you again. Peace.